day 27th September 1845, Istanbul was cheering up for the birth of Sultan Abdul Majid's son, Abdul Hamid. Little did they know that Abdul Hamid would change Ottoman fate forever. At the age of 11, Abdul Hamid lost his mother due to the Black Death. Abdul Hamid had studied science with private teachers and was interested in many different branches of science as well as knowing five languages by heart. He didn't express his thoughts and opinions much in his youth though, so state elders and the people of the palace didn't give him much attention. However, when his grandmother, who was the wife of Mahmoud II and mother of Abdul Majid and Abdul Aziz, brought him closer to his uncle Sultan Abdul Aziz, his political understanding was increased by a significant level. Back in 1856, Murad V had accepted Freemasonry and joined the Grand Freemason Lodge, becoming the first and only Ottoman Sultan to be a part of the Freemasons. Murad V was also the next person lined for the throne, so this was a big one for the Masons. Murad also had a very lesser known uh, mental disorder caused by his alcohol addiction. There was recently a revolution that happened which had dethroned Abdulaziz and exiled him. It was replaced by a constitutional government led by Medad Pasha, a well-known kingmaker. Murad V then ascended to the throne. It is known that Abdulaziz felt very uncomfortable and unsafe in the palace he was exiled to. And after the passing away of his wife due to stress, Abdulaziz was then transferred to another palace. The new government would then, without the knowledge and order of Medad Pasha, assassinate Abdulaziz make it look like a suicide by doing it with a pair of scissors. They would then just throw the pair of scissors and near the dead body of uh, Abdulaziz. But with further investigation, it was found out that the government themselves had gotten the assassination done. The reason for this was because both of Abdulaziz's wrists were cut when investigated upon, which was impossible because if one of his wrists were cut, the blood from his vessels would start flooding out of his wrist, and he would have a lack of blood, kill, uh, killing him pretty much instantly. On June the 4th, as Abdulaziz was assassinated. Murad had ascended the throne a few months prior to that, and could not make his own decisions due to his mental disorder, making him the perfect puppet for the government. His reign wouldn't last long though, because in the final week of August 1876, just four months after he had ascended to the throne, a rumor spread that Abdul Hamid had negotiated with the government and then ascended to the throne with the acceptance of some conditions given by Midrash Pasha. The biggest condition was that Abdul Hamid would open the parliament and declare constitutional monarchy. Another condition would be that if another person from the royal family stood up and asked for the throne, Abdul Hamid was, would there and then give up his throne uh, for that royal family member. Now, Abdul Hamid accepted these harsh harsh terms and, and ascended to the throne on Thursday, August 31st, 1876. When Abdul Hamid ascended to the throne, the Ottomans were going through its most depressing times. Many European powers and Russia stood against the Caliphate. This was followed by revolts in the Ottoman-ruled Arab lands. Promised a Middle Pasha, Sultan Abdul Hamid declared constitutional monarchy on the 23rd of December, 1876. With this announcement, however, Abdul Hamid's powers were greatly reduced, and most decisions of the state were left to the parliament, which was full of Midat Pasha and his followers. The empire had entered major wars and was defeated in them in this period. With the loss of the Russo-Turkish War, Sultan Abdul Hamid abolished the constitutional monarchy. Now, these wars were fought for two years and a defeat for the Ottomans resulted in very harsh treaties imposed on the empire. But Sultan Abdul Hamid reduce the effect of these treaties with a strategy. Though Romania, Serbia, Montenegro and more were lost entirely in this period due to the mistakes of the parliament. Abdul Hamid Khan didn't sell a single inch of his land when he had the absolute authority of the state and he preserved the state borders in the best way. The French uh, occupied Tunisia in this period and had, and had used the 1878 Berlin Agreement as an excuse. Even if indirectly though, the reason for this was Midas Pasha. Enemies of the Ottoman Empire started provoking people against Sultan Abdul Hamid using fake propaganda. They created a perception by putting Red Sultan in the headlines of newspapers. 
We can see the effects of these perceptions even today. Abdul Hamid Khan was alone many times in his political life, but despite that, he had opened thousands of schools and signed thousands of projects, and successfully modernized the state. Sultan Abdul Hamid is best known for the construction of the Hijaz Railway, which was a railway that went from Damascus to the holy city of Medina, through the Hijaz region of modern-day Saudi Arabia. The main purpose of this railway was to connect Istanbul to the holy cities of Mecca and Medina for Hajj. It would have also improved economic and political integration in Arab regions. Sultan Abdul Hamid had kept the state alive and going for a long time by following a policy of balance throughout his reign. But he was deposed by a military uprising on March 31st, 3025, according to the Rumi calendar, or April 1909, according to the Gregorian calendar. This event is known as the 31st March in after Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan was deposed, he was later exiled to Thessaloniki. When Thessaloniki fell to Greece in 1912 though, he was brought back to Istanbul in the Baylor Bay Palace. We passed away on February 10, 1918. In the same place, his mother had died 60 years.